I used to do MUN with uh, Mr. Stagg. Okay. And then a few years ago, I was asked to coach with Mr. Bissett, uh, the lower level, while Mr. Baker was handling the upper level IASIS. And then there was a pause of a year, and nobody was doing any kind of lower level debate, so I saw a need and I jumped in. But I'm not necessarily trained for debate, I was trained for MUN. But Mr. it's really nice to work with Mr. Baker because he kind of coaches the coaches. And I was able to learn a lot from him, and then that's applicable to this year. And he's always around, he's always helpful, and he's kind of the sage to go back to when you need advice. SAS debated ISB my sophomore, my freshman year in high school. And so my brother and I were the debate team at SAS then. <laughs> and so we debated. That was the first debate between two IASA schools. And I, that was my freshman year in high school. And then, so that's, that, that's kind of a, a, a historical thing. And then um, the second year of IASIS, so that's 83, 84, I started coaching debate until, and then last year was my last year, I, I gave it up. It, it's interesting, okay, this is my first year as head coach, and I'm learning as much as the kids. And I think everything is a work in pro progress, okay? I think every kid here is gonna say they left the tournament having learned something, and it's the same thing uh, for me. And, and I'm constantly thinking, what can I do better as a coach for next year? And one of the things that I've realized is we probably need to settle on our IASIS team earlier. Our A team, they've been together for several weeks, and there's some unity there, and they're accustomed to working with one another. The problem is the B team only got set maybe a few weeks ago, like two or three weeks ago, and they're still working out the bugs. So as a coach, what I've realized is I need to learn that we need to settle that team early. And that's, so that's one thing that as a coach I'm learning, um, but overall it's been a good experience. I think, I think one of the benefits of me coaching the team is that I'm, I'm very holistic. Like I can see, or I saw last year, that there's a huge debate community at SA, or at, not in Singapore. And I can see we need to tap into that and we have to get a lot more friendly debates. We have to get a lot more students out for debate. And I can see holistically, like, there are a lot of connections there. Where in the past, I think uh, I asked this was the be all end all of why we were doing debate. So I see this mushrooming even more, that there's a lot more opportunities. So holistically, yes, I think I can, uh, I bring a little bit of a different um, perspective or viewpoint to debate from years past. Twice both my teams made the finals. And that was pretty cool. Actually, I think it's very clear as far as what separates SAS from the other teams. I think stylistically, uh, the other teams probably have a bit of an edge. And I think that edge comes from a lot of the coaches are actually theater forensic coaches. And I'm a social science coach. And our kids approach the motion from a very intellectual, analytical level rather than just purely stylistic. So if you watch an SAS team debate, their style is very workmanlike, they're analytical and they're thoughtful. But if you see the other teams, you can see that theater coming out a little bit, but I think they don't necessarily have uh, the depth of argument that our team has. So I've noticed that between our two squads. It's the kid who, who is well-versed on current, current events. It's the kid probably who, who takes challenging courses, so he has a broad knowledge, he or, she, he or she has a broad knowledge of lots of stuff, right? And then, the kid who can think on their feet, and uh, the kid who's willing to engage the audience, you put all those things together and you get a successful deba parliamentary debater. That aspect of thinking on your feet when you're up there at the podium and you get like a POI and you weren't expecting that question. So that's probably the hardest thing because you can't prepare for those sorts of questions all the time. And so uh, that. I think the best debaters actually can ha weave that into their speech and connect it back to their motion. So it's that impromptu, think on your feet um, element. This kind of debate is much more beneficial for kids who want to go on a debate in college. Because you're busy in college and, and, and you don't have time to do all the research and stuff. And a lot of our kids who have debated here, where they got to college, they did parliamentary debate in college. Plus in college, the, the kind of debate we used to do, kids get scholarships for that. And so, you never had a chance to make the team because they go out and recruit like state champions and stuff like that. So this obviously, this gives kids an opportunity to move on and do it in college, which is cool, I think. You know, it's something that they, they could participate in college. All the connections that we've done with ACJC, NUS High School, some of the other local schools, as much as it's competitive, 
it's a friendly debate. And what I've noticed is um, they are now Facebook friends, that they've exchanged emails. We've had a social. So they are actually starting to get outside of SAS and meeting their uh, peers at the local Singapore schools. And I think it's kind of a nice story that we are actually becoming friends with local schools. And this will continue, hopefully.